Hi everyone, my name is Nick Greenfield and I'm a program manager on the Bridge to Kubernetes team. Today, I'm going to be showing you how Bridge to Kubernetes works on an existing microservice application running in Kubernetes. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using Azure Kubernetes Service as my cluster of choice, but Bridge can be used with any Kubernetes cluster. Whether it's a cluster running on-prem or in the cloud, or even on a developer's workstation, Bridge to Kubernetes is available as a development tool. So let's first take a look at the application we'll be debugging with Bridge to Kubernetes. So what you're looking at is a simple web application that functions as a bicycle renting store running in my Azure Kubernetes service. The first step is to log in as one of two users. Once I'm logged in, I can browse a selection of bikes to rent. Let's select the men's cruiser. It's at this point where I can actually rent this bike, and this takes it out of the available inventory. Once I'm ready to return my bike, I click return. I can confirm my return, and I can leave a review, which is optional. Now the bike has been restored to the available inventory for others to rent. Now let's take a look at how this application is architected. As you can see, this application is comprised of many microservices. And even though it's a simple web app, there are many moving pieces that communicate with each other. So as a developer, how do we debug one of these components, let's say the backend bikes API, and be confident that our code changes will behave as expected in the context of the entire application? But one approach is to use the bridge to Kubernetes feature. Bridge allows developers to specify a service in the Kubernetes cluster, in this case, the Bikes API, and replace it with a locally running version on their development workstation. This allows developers to iterate on microservice code locally while leveraging external dependencies or the rest of the services running in the cluster. Let's take a closer look at how this works and the exact steps a developer needs to take in order to use Bridge. First, Developers need to open the source code of the service they wish to debug on their development workstation in either Visual Studio or VS Code. One prerequisite to using Bridge to Kubernetes is that developers have a way of running and debugging that service locally. Next, developers need to install the Bridge to Kubernetes extension from Visual Studio or VS Code marketplaces. Once the extension is installed, developers can start using Bridge to Kubernetes. The first step is to configure the connection between the Kubernetes cluster and the development workstation. Once the connection is established, developers can select a service in the cluster to debug locally. It's at this point, Bridge will replace that service with a redirector. So when traffic initiated through the front end entry point of the application running in Kubernetes and eventually calls that replaced service, that request is reverse proxied to the developer's workstation to their locally running version. It's at this point, developers can iterate on their code and use familiar debugging practices. Once the code running locally has been executed, requests are then sent back into the cluster to be seamlessly completed. As you can see, one large benefit of using Bridge to Kubernetes is that developers only need to run the service or services they are developing locally. All external dependencies are leveraged from the Kubernetes environment. Let's take a look at this exact example in practice. All right, so I have my VS Code editor open. Um, that's the bridge to Kubernetes experience that I'll be showing today. I already have the extension installed from the extension marketplace. And bridge to Kubernetes takes in the local cube context into account. Uh, and so I can check with my current context by looking at this new status bar icon that bridge has added to my VS Code editor. And so the Nick demo is my current cluster that's being targeted. So in this case, this is my AKS cluster running up in Azure. And then bike app is the namespace uh, that is currently being targeted. And so that's the namespace of where my application is running that I wish to debug. The other thing that I wanna point out before we get started is the source code that I have open here on the left. Um, so I just have that one bike service open. This is the source code for that one service. Uh, notice that I do not have a Docker file. I don't have any Kubernetes configuration such as Helm charts or manifests. 
the idea being uh, I'm going to debug and run my service natively outside of the container for that quick inner loop feedback that that process get, uh, provides. And so at this point, I'm ready to configure Bridge to Kubernetes and how it, my dev machine uh, is able to connect to my Kubernetes cluster. And so to do that, uh, I'm going to open the command palette and type bridge. And so I have this configure option, which is the one that we're going to want to select. And so uh, there's one of four steps here in this wizard. This information is persisted. It's kind of a one-time setup, uh, but can be changed later if need be. And so the first question in this process is, which service do, in my Kubernetes environment do I want to replace and redirect to my locally running version? And so here's a, a list of all the services running in my bike app namespace. Um, and so since I have the bikes service open, uh, the source code for the bike service in my editor, uh, I'm going to select the bike service. The next question is, which port do I run this service uh, on my machine? Which, what is the port that I, I use when I run it locally? And so this is a node API. Um, and somewhere in my code, I have defined port 3000. And so I will say port 3000. Um, the next question is, how do I want to run my service? And the idea behind this is Bridge wants developers to continue using debug profiles and launch targets that they've already uh, have configured and potentially have customized. Um, and so I only have one here where uh, I use NPM to run my, my service. So uh, I will select this one option. And what Bridge will do is actually clone this profile, uh, but add some additional configuration from the Kubernetes environment, such as environment variables, um, connection strings, volumes, et cetera. So uh, I will select launch via NPM. And the last question that I didn't get too um, much into during the architecture slide is the work mode. Um, so, uh, with redirecting traffic to developers' workstations, um, that can become problematic in a shared environment. Uh, so if I have a colleague that's working in the same namespace uh, on a different service or even potentially the same service that I'm working on, um, our traffic will be routed, rerouted to each other's machines and we'd be hitting each other's breakpoints, which obviously would, would kind of create some overlap, right? Um, and some problems uh, with us having to debug our service. So uh, Bridge provides two work modes. One is the um, non-isolated and then the other is the isolated. And so for developers that do work in a shared environment, they're gonna wanna select the isolation mode. And so what Bridge will do is uh, give a provide a subdomain, um, so a specialized URL uh, to your application's URL that only traffic using that URL will get redirected to the developer's machine. And so in this case here, if I select, uh, you know, yes, I want to work in isolation, um, it's going to take my user machine's account, so Nick Gree, it's truncated, and then a unique uh, SHA. Um, and put and prefix that onto my application's URL. So it knows only traffic that is using this specialized URL that Bridge has provided uh, will redirect traffic to my machine. Otherwise, any traffic that's using the normal URL of my application will hit the service that's running in the cluster um, and not that will not get redirected to my machine. So for demonstration purposes, I will say, uh, yeah, let's work in isolation. Great. Um, at this point, Bridge has been configured. This information is persisted in my VS Code folder here, which can be changed later. Um, but at this point, I'm ready to debug my service in the context of the entire application running in my Kubernetes environment. Um, and so what I will do is go to my source code. Um, and as I mentioned, this is a, uh, a node API uh, for any time a information about a specific bike is requested and it actually will execute this service. And so I have this path here um, where anytime a, a request is made to a specific bike, this is the function that is called. And so what I'll do is place a breakpoint here and make a change. So we have static placeholder images for every bike right now, and I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna actually make sure that there's, if there's no static placeholder image, that it's actually showing the right picture of the bike. And I'll put my breakpoint here to show that traffic will actually get routed to my machine and save. So great, I've made a change, I have a breakpoint, and I'm ready to debug my service. So switching over to the debug uh, pane over here, 
If I look at my targets, um, you can see that this is what I was talking about where Bridge will clone current debug uh, profiles. And so since I selected the launch via NPM, Bridge has cloned that profile. Um, and the title of this is with Kubernetes. Um, but this is the profile that I want to use to use Bridge, which will have that extra information from the cluster. So I'll select this and I will F5. So it's at this point that my debug session is starting. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen is Bridge is going to go and make that connection between uh, my dev machine and my Kubernetes cluster. It's going to find that service that I specified. So in this case, that bike service, it's going to swap that out and put that redirector in place so that when traffic is called uh, to that service, it will redirect that traffic to my machine and hit my instance running locally instead. Um, so just like that, that connection has been made and I'm in my debug session. And so um, the, the, the quickest way to launch my application here is through this status bar icon that I have at the bottom. If I select this, um, this is a list uh, of all of my ingresses for my application. And you'll notice that uh, there's some that look pretty similar to each other. And that's because since I selected the isolation mode, Bridge will actually clone all of your ingresses um, so that you can actually uh, leverage the, the isolation entry points. And so this is the URL, this bike sharing web is the URL of my application normally. I now have a new one that uh, has that prefix of that subdomain that only I'm going to use to redirect traffic to my machine. So if I select that over here, and I now test my service end-to-end. Uh, -end. So I'm going into the front-end entry point of my application. Um, so far, all these requests are going into my Kubernetes cluster, hitting the services running in that namespace. And I will select the men's cruiser. And just like that, traffic was redirected to my machine and I hit my breakpoint. And so if I switch back, you can see I made a change where there's no longer a placeholder uh, image for the bike. I now have the real picture of that bike. And if I compared this with the, the normal URL of my application, um, let's go with the men's cruiser, you can see that it's still showing that uh, placeholder image. And that's because traffic using the normal URL is going and hitting that service that's running in the cluster uh, that I have not taken over. It's hitting the original service in that namespace. But since I'm using the specialized URL, it knows that traffic coming in using this prefixed URL to actually route that to the locally running version on my machine where my changes are now being executed and then seamlessly being, that request is being seamlessly sent back into the cluster. And the last thing that I wanna point out here is that the only thing that I have running on this machine is this one service, this one process, right? All the other uh, external dependencies uh, are being leveraged from that Kubernetes environment. I didn't have to configure how does my bike service talk to the bike data store or the user's service. All of that was provided for free by just taking that configuration from the deployed environment, from that namespace running in Kubernetes uh, and is available for my service to run uh, for free. Um, so that's Bridge to Kubernetes uh, in practice. Thank you.